I just thought I'd do a <clears throat> response video because it's what I'm doing here, it, it's the only way to get, I'm trying to like, mm, trying to, steal, <laughs> I'll say steal, some level of, of authority by responding to something that has gained more authority than I have because it's my only option to do so that could easily be interpreted as narcissistic. <clears throat> um, but it's in my response to that, it's not, it's, it's the only accessible avenue to enter a philosophical conversation without sacrificing the conditions that are allowing me to have a unique perspective on, on it. And <clears throat> as someone who's kind of um, explored deeply both sides of the religious and satanic arguments, I think I think what Satanism or Luciferianism, whatever whatever it is, that I'm <clears throat> as I'm I can, I can listen to things and I'm like I could easily be displayed as as, as the same thing. But I hope that my awareness of it kind of maybe is the differentiating. I'm like, I know, that's why I'm staying here and not like going into, I'm trying to to speak almost like a monk. I think we had Christian monks had to remove themselves. And it's like, I'm trying to bring the same thing to that argument by not participating in that kind of carnival look at me, although I'm doing that, but I'm doing it away from the spotlight and trying to formulate the whole story before it gets in interfered with by, by the, um, over bombastic nature of, of a public <clears throat> spectacle. And that was kind of coincidental because I was going to go and do music and then it, I was kind of pushed out. And so I'm doing it here. And you might be like, well, you're doing all these things. You're doing all this like performative stuff. But I'm like, I'm not an idiot. I know that this isn't working. So I'm trying to, like a writer, I'm trying to write my whole book before I actually do anything that's, that could um, break it. And I think this is what I want to add to the like, the Luciferian kind of argument is I think the reason we have a figure in the first place of Lucifer or say of Loki that is this trickster, this deceit, this liar is because it is not whatever this is in either humanity or in the, in the world, it's not obvious. It's not black and white. It's not, it's, it's not carrying a pitchfork and, and in flames and, and that that's too obvious. If it was that obvious, you would just be like, yeah, that's that. But it's not. It's always like he's the deceiver. He's the trickery. He's the thing. And so I think, <clears throat> I think that story is, is in there to say he is such a trickster that the possibility of him implanting himself or him manifesting throughout the thing that you may be celebrating as the opposite, so that would be the church, that would be organised religion, is so likely that we need to put this in here as, and there's all these things about this truth. And I think if, say, the, the Satanist movement, the Luciferian movement, even heavy metal, all these things that is done, Sympathy for the Devil, the Rolling Stones, I think is to go, he's such a trickster that we've been doing his work in the name of his, his oppressor, of his 
destroyer. And that's how, that's how implanted it is. You need to hear this warning of evil and of, 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 of the devil. And that needs to be stronger than your alliance to the actual church you're in. Because the likelihood that that will manifest through leaders of your church or through the actual church itself is so high. And I think that's what it's about. <clears throat> and then, of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a sum that can never be completely added up. Because then even if you flip it and go, well, now we're the church of Satan, then you're just in the same thing where... I think that it's almost like a, it's an absurd argument where you're like, oh, we're the church of Satan. So if this is reversed, we will be the good. But you, that doesn't work like that because it's still the base argument. It's like, no, you're still just a institution claiming this. And so you're just as likely to be, to degrade into the thing because it's something that can't be captured. Whatever this essence is of evil that ends up with atrocities and all the worst of humanity can manifest in all places, including the highest held, include, even if we do the abstract thing of, of completely reversing that and flipping the tables, it will still just emerge from there. Um, <clears throat> and that, that's, I think, almost like what the, the pride movement now is, is almost doing the same thing. It's like, well, this... These churches are almost classically held things of of heterosexual normalcy, which is how the normative, heteronormative culture, but it's like, it's not heteronormative culture anyway to begin with because it's, it's more, it's actually incredibly restrictive on that. So it's conformative heterosexual culture and then you can't just flip it and say, well, instead of holding up this... Because it's almost like the lab rat version of heterosexuality. It's not. It's not base heterosexuality. It's not even consistent heterosexuality. It's, it's religiously and culturally defended snapshot of, of, of a heterosexuality normative that never actually existed, really. It was just held up by conformity with the religious structures of the church so it never actually existed it was a snapshot you in response to your snapshot by turning the tables and reversing it you're just having the same effect and then doubling down on the restrictive influence on heterosexual behavior anyway that has already had thousands of years of restriction based on what you're criticizing because there wasn't consensus that this was an agreement it was it was already a constricted emergent <clears throat> phenomenon it wasn't baseline and it wasn't consistent across cultures and across um things like that it was a heterosexuality in that social framework uh was an artificial creation and in my viewing of it in his history and and the actual depths of it and the constant conflict that we're in with it in the form of like romance, the, the, our idea of romance and, and unrequited, unrequited love and all these things come from the clear struggle with that conformity to that artificial idea of heterosexual um, conformity with the religious ideal. And then now pride... And the LBGT has now now just created a thing where it's like, well, everything is great except for heteronormative, but they don't, it's not like conformative, they just like heterosexuals are the enemy is kind of the simplistic thing. And then so they are now manifesting Luciferian thing because it's come from, I think it's almost like Luciferianism, Satanism, Satan himself emerges he, the place where he comes from is the place where rationality is is sacrificed to to the group 
And I think that's where he exists. And that group can be religion or it can be new formed ideology or it can be um, hedonism or it can be the opposite to hedonism, which would be like complete sacrifice. I think if we were fully sacrificed, he would still emerge. He comes, Satan emerges when we, yeah, when we deny our own instincts and our own observation to the to the group. <clears throat> and then you can see why this is this is the role of a shaman is to invoke that spirit and then come back and show people. This is why people are saying he's possessed by the devil, he's possessed by demons. That's his job. If the group has has sacrificed its common sense and its individual if each member is sacrificed its individual interpretation of the event for the collective group phenomenon, then the role of the shaman is to remove himself, invoke the spirit of the demon that he's seeing has possessed the group and then show the group that interpretation of what they would see the demon as. And this saying like Lord of the Flies, this ends with Simon getting killed, this ends with Jesus getting killed, this is the phenomenon. Um, because almost if you think the idea, if Rome was this heavily held pagan worship of the gods and, and all this, and, the, and then this guy is just a guy who's like, oh, I'm the son of God, I'm the most powerful thing. That almost is, that's their interpretation of the devil. That's why they killed him. These religions didn't put him forward as their messiah and he's self-prescribing. That's the same effect as somebody now going and manifesting the devil and so I, I think it's where if we go too if we go so far along with this pride movement and this celebration of everything non-heterosexual then their manifestation of the devil will be a father like a kind of normal father that is their that's their, if that group is so confined to that and they can't see it they can, and they've invoked the devil by that rejection of individual interpretation for the group collective then then the shamans of this era will be this and that's what i am a father <laughs> a father and even even worse it's like not a perfect father i was a father who did you know have careless sex i wasn't a perfect father but i'm still being a good father and that's in direct contrast because i think a lot of that that movement towards hedonism is a rejection of the overbearing father who was maybe had the constraints to be too good and in that that constrains his actual identity and so they're going well i'm going to explode my identity to appease my father's imprisonment and i think that's all subconscious and so you would be stuck. You're either waiting for the perfect father messiah in God or the perfect devil. And I, I, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Do you get it? But the main thing is like Satan emerges where when we deny our own interpretation of, of the event. It, t it took it took the allies coming in and ending nazi germany for satan to be revealed within nazi germany because they were all captured by the group and they didn't they sacrificed their individual thing for the group <clears throat> and that turned out to be the and that, this i think is where we're right there with like pride it's like this is all being supported but it's like we're, I'm seeing the devil in pride and you can see how they've the early proponents of pride were filling the role of the shaman and now they've now because they've captured so much of our identity now the shaman will be the not not the gate not the thing it's it's 
yeah, it's the same again. Anyway, cool. Thank you.